Stand by to fall in Polk County. This is today's veteran. Hello and welcome. On behalf of everyone at the Polk County Office of Veterans Services, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Tim Kirkhart, and on this installment of Today's Veteran, we talk with the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team. The Wounded Warrior Softball Team is a 501c3 public charity whose mission is to inspire and educate others while enhancing the health and welfare of wounded warrior amputees. We start off the show with the James A. Haley uh, Department of Veterans Affairs Spinal Cord Injury Center. They provide a patient-centered team approach to inpatient care. Patients will be involved in their own treatment plan and in making decisions about their care. Joining us in studio today is Dr. Kevin White. He is the chief of the Spinal Cord Injury and Disorder Center at the James A. Haley VA Hospital in Tampa. Welcome, Dr. White. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very honored and privileged to be here today. Great. We're glad to have you. Uh, let's start off, if you would just kind of um, give us a brief background. Where have you been? Where have you come from? Well, my name's Kevin White. I'm actually from Chicago originally and lived there most of my life until to college. I uh, did some, my college in Wisconsin, at, and uh, actually in Massachusetts at Williams College, and then medical school in Chicago at Chicago Medical School, and then did uh, some training in Wisconsin at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I did a spinal cord injury fellowship there and worked there for approximately seven years, and then moved here to Tampa. And I've been here in Tampa for about 10 years as the chief of spinal cord injury medicine. Okay. Well, Describe the Veterans Spinal Cord Injury Team. Well, the, the team is, is something that we're very proud of. And one of the things that we try to do is we honor the veterans by providing exceptional care. We do that in everything we do. Uh, we try to make sure we're fulfilling the mission of the VA and of the Spinal Cord Injury Unit by providing that comprehensive care. And we do that through research, through education, promoting uh, collaboration, and we do that in everything, every single thing and every single aspect that we do. And uh, so we're very proud of the team that we do. And uh, one of the things that, we, that helps us accomplish that is by having physical therapy, occupational therapy, uh, speech therapy. We have our, our, our rehab docs and uh, recreational therapists that help us to provide that care for them. We, uh, we cover spinal cord injury. We cover multiple sclerosis and, a and ALS. Uh, ALS is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, and uh, just to briefly explain what that is, it's a progressive neurodegen neurodegenerative disease. And uh, you know, I frequently I'll ask people, you know, how many how many people in your family do you know of have diabetes or hypertension? And just about everybody knows that. And then I'll ask them, how many people do you know of have ALS? And not very many people can say that which means that the education and knowledge about, their, about ALS doesn't exist. Uh, so we try to make sure that we provide that for them. Uh, we, again, we provide SCI, uh, spinal cord injury, MS, and ALS care. And, uh, and I'll just briefly talk about each of those things. Okay. Uh, with spinal cord injury, we are actually one of 25 spinal cord injury centers throughout the country. and. Uh, most people don't know that uh, one of the specialties in the VA system is spinal cord injury medicine care. And uh, if someone is injured and has a spinal cord injury, they can go pretty much anywhere in the country and find a spinal cord injury center and make sure that they're getting the care that they need. Uh, and so spinal, Tampa is one of these spinal cord injury centers and uh, 
we actually work via a hub and spokes kind of model where the 25 centers are the hubs where we take care of the veterans. But we want to make sure patients, again, wherever they are, even if they're in a rural area, that they're able to get the care as well. So uh, Tampa, for instance, we're the hub, but we actually work with other areas in the area, other centers in the area, including Orlando, uh, Lake City, Gainesville, Bay Pines, to make sure that they're providing care for spinal cord injury patients as well. Uh, in Tampa, we, we see over 1,500 veterans with spinal cord injuries every year. And we, uh, once someone is into the system, into our system, we treat them for a lifetime. So we, we cover them for the rest of their lives. Uh, we do that uh, when they're first injured and then every single year. At our VA, we have 100, 100 inpatient beds. 70 of, th 70 of them are acute care and for rehab or, or for patients who have some kind of medical injury or issue. And we have actually 30 long-term care beds too where it's their home. Uh, so we, we're proud of the inpatient care that we provide for them. We do outpatient care and management for our patients too, and home care. And so we actually have a staff or a team that goes out to the home. And uh, we do something that's pretty unique where if, if someone needs it, we'll have a nurse go out to the house every single day. And often a physician go out to the house too. And so it's some unique care that we're able to provide. One of our goals is to have patients or veterans actually want to choose to come to our center to get their care. And uh, even if they started in the community, we want them to come to the VA uh, and, uh, and we want to provide that exceptional care for them. And some of the things that we do uh, that to, help do, to help us with that process is we look at the patient uh, in terms of their whole care. So not just their body, but their mind and spirit as well. So for the body, we'll do rehabilitation, we'll provide all the medical care that they need, but we also will do things like yoga, we'll do Tai Chi, and we'll do these things in the wheelchair. Uh, we'll do acupuncture for them. We actually uh, have an extensive uh, adaptive sports program where you know, patients, even before they injured, they may not have known that they liked skiing or, or water, water skiing or sailing. But we expose them to these things, to, to just about every kind of sport you can imagine. Uh, softball, baseball, swimming, everything. Uh, if there's a sport that, they, that we aren't familiar with, we'll make sure that they have access to that too. And then we also do things like virtual reality. And uh, we're very excited about that program too because uh, patients, some of our patients have medical complications like a, uh, an ulcer or a wound that will restrict them to the bed. And we can actually bring a virtual reality headset to them and help them feel like they're getting out in the community and experiencing different things. They can, uh, if we have uh, a team or someone goes to the Strawberry Festival or something, uh, we can actually record that and have them watch that in a virtual reality headset. Uh, so we're excited about that and we have a virtual reality room that we offer and we try to uh, to make sure the access is there for everyone so uh, with some of our patients they get to the point where they may not be able to leave the house we actually have video telehealth where we can uh, connect to them in the home and we can do just about every service for them have the physician see them uh, a nurse a therapist can see them a nutritionist can see them can look at the refrigerator, look at you know their environment. Uh, sometimes we can even assess their wheelchair uh, and and make sure we can make some minor adjustments from that as well. So we do quite a bit with spinal cord injury management, uh, and with MS we do a lot with MS as well. Where uh, when we're considered an MS center of excellence, and we've seen over 400 uh, veterans over the last five six years with MS and uh, we're able to provide specialty treatment and medications that are very expensive, uh, but we're able to give it to them for free uh, in our VA system. And with ALS, which is a progressive disorder, uh, where initially they may have some weakness in an arm or a leg, but over time it progresses to the point where they can't breathe on their own and they can't communicate and talk. 
it's a very uh, devastating disorder for a lot of patients and their families. And so we try to provide the care for them every step of the way with that as well. And, uh, and you mentioned the team that we have. That's, where the that's another aspect where the team is really extremely important and actually has been shown to, to extend patients' lives. So the moment someone with ALS comes into our center, we, we actually will bring them in for a few days and make sure that they are seen by our entire team, including those therapists, the neurologists, uh, the, the rehab doc, the uh, assistive technology person who will help them to be able to communicate at any stage, the uh, pulmonologist and respiratory therapy to help them with their breathing and respiration, the speech uh, and language pathologist who also will help them with communication as well, uh, along with our, all of our other therapists, PT, physical therapy, OT, uh, and we also have the capability of having anything else that they need. So if they need uh, something called a G-tube or a tube to put in their stomach to help them to eat, uh, we can do that. If they come up with some medical complication that anyone else has, they have, let's say they have a, a heart attack or oh, they need uh, surgery for their appendix or anything, we have all those specialties as well to help them. Are there any preventable health issues that veterans come into your unit with? Yes, there are a lot of preventable health issues that we actually will train our patients and our care caregivers on to help them to prevent these illnesses. One of them is a pressure injury. Uh, you know, as we sit here, uh, we're constantly shifting our bodies and uh, changing the source of where the pressure is on our bodies. With a spinal cord injury, they aren't able to move their, like most, most of the time, they're not able to move their, their legs or, uh, or their, their, uh, their bottoms. And so the pressure builds up. And unless they shift and move around when they're sitting or if they're in bed, they're at high risk of a pressure injury. And so we teach them, the, the veterans, we teach their caregivers how to prevent that by shifting their body weights uh, uh, and their position and turning in bed and different things like that. We also stress the importance of uh, immunizations for them and for all of our patients, for the, the, especially the, those with quadriplegia and, and ALS who have a high, even higher risk of respiratory compli complications. We stress the immunizations as well. And uh, we actually have a program where we will go to we, we want to educate the young as well. So we have gone to high schools and grammar schools, elementary schools, uh, and stressing the importance of safety, seat belts and helmets. And you just mentioned, I think, uh, if there's any change that you could recommend um, to prevent the types of issues we're talking about. Uh, for the, the biggest change will be for, for the safety, just to make sure that patients are, and people are aware of the risk. Uh, in terms of some of the active duty uh, injuries that we've had, we've even had some from sports injuries. Uh, and so some common things like helmets or more protection can help prevent some of those things as well. Uh, and we've had a lot of injuries from motorcycle accidents and people not wearing their proper gear as well. So we like to, to make sure we educate as much on those things. Okay. Well, Doctor, you mentioned the ALS symposium coming up. What do you expect to walk away with from uh, that? And we're running a little short on time, so. Okay. Well, we're very proud of our ALS program. It's something that uh, we've been working on for quite some time. We know that uh, it's a devastating injury and not a lot of people are aware of what ALS is uh, or how to manage it. And so what we've done over the, over the years is make sure we put together that extensive team, uh, that interdisciplinary team to help with the management and care of patients uh, and, uh, and also make sure that we are available for any new treatments or uh, uh, management out things that come along as well. Uh, so our ALS symposium actually is our third one that we're very excited to be putting on. It's gonna be coming up in April 
and the theme of it is interdisciplinary team approach. Uh, we're going to be talking about things like the pulmonary management of it, the, the exciting research that's out there on ALS right now, the new drug called Radicaba uh, that's been, it's only the second drug out there ever for ALS that has been shown some benefit for, for ALS treatment. And, uh, and, this, and the, it's the team again is the approach. And what we, our goal of it is to educate, especially VA staff around the, uh, the area and the country uh, about how to help manage a the ALS population. Dr. White, we're out of time. I appreciate you coming, time flies, and um, appreciate everything that you and your team does. Thank you, it's been an honor and a pleasure. For more information on the Spinal Cord Injury and Disorder Center at the James A. Haley Hospital, look them up on the web at www.tampa.va.gov. Visiting the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital can be intimidating, but a friendly face you may see is that of a black lab named Hercules. Hercules is a facility service therapy dog giving unconditional love and support to everyone who walks through the doors.
Hercules belongs to Robert Lynch, the veteran's experience officer at James A. Haley. Make sure you follow the Rockstar Black Lab on Facebook under Hercules Lynch. Welcome back to today's veteran. I'm your host, Tim Kirkhart. The Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team represents some of our nation's bravest and most determined heroes, soldiers, and veterans. These men have sustained severe injuries resulting in amputation and through extensive rehabilitation, they have become competitive athletes again, playing against able-bodied teams in exhibition games across the country. For the third year in a row, the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team returned to Lakeland, Florida for their annual spring training at Tigertown. So the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team is a group of veterans. We're 100% uh, veteran organization. Uh, we're a nonprofit, and what we do is we gather all of these veterans who have amputations or a loss of limb of some type, uh, whether it's arm, leg, multiple limbs at the same time, uh, and we put them together on a team and we play softball. Uh, so our, our major vehicle to get where we are uh, is through the game of softball. Uh, that's our, our major sport. Uh, but what we do actually is so much more than that. Uh, our tagline is serving beyond the uniform. Uh, and, and that's exactly what we do. Our purpose is to give these veterans uh, first and foremost the opportunity to be together, uh, to, to continue that camaraderie that they had when they were uh, serving as active duty military, uh, and to give, give them a, a group of people who have the, sim the, the similar um, uh, uh, disabilities, I guess you could call it. We call them abilities. Uh, it's, it's just a little different how we see them uh, because we try to, we acknowledge that it's there. Uh, we acknowledge that an amputation is what gives you a place on this team. Uh, but really for us, it's about uh, the therapeutic benefits of playing sports, uh, and using your amputation, learning from that on how to modify that, that uh, ability and, and to continue playing the sport that they love. This, this team is very rare in a lot of ways. First of all, veterans are on it. To serve in the United States military, become a veteran is unique in itself. Then to be missing a limb, you're even in a smaller group. So to be a veteran, to be an amputee, and to be a competitive veteran that plays sports on this team, we all share the camaraderie of when we served in the military. Now we get to do it on the field. And when I see another player make a great play, then I'm, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go out there and make a great play. It really is like, it's an awesome bonding experience here. None of us never quit anything in our lives, and why are we gonna start now? And being on this team really shows the drive and um, will to win, so to speak, that we all have. Our kids camp is the uh, largest piece of what we do. Uh, it takes the most effort and it, and it gives us the greatest results we could possibly ask for. Um, our kids camp, we bring in 20 amputee children uh, and show them that you can, you can still play soft, softball. You can you know, continue to play your sports and, and we have a proven track record of, of kids who you know, have grown up with us, literally grown up with us. Uh, and are now playing high school baseball and softball. It's it's incredible, and and uh, the amount of, of effort that goes into it is just it's worth every every ounce of it because what we what we do is it's changing lives. It's changing the kids' lives. It's changing the parents' lives. It's changing the players' lives. I think one of the coolest things that I've seen 
in the camp is you, you get to be a part of their confidence and, and teach them to be proud of who they are. Because it's not their fault, you know, it's not their fault. They're, at least with me and my teammates, like we signed on the dotted line and we knew, you know, there was a chance. Uh, I didn't ever think that was gonna happen, but I mean, there's literally a line where you sign and you're, you're insuring your body parts. I didn't even know I was doing it at the time, but I, mean, I did that and I consciously did that. I knew the, the dangers of it. These kids are kids and they deserve it. They deserve to be kids. And you know, we get to get them and a lot of times there's been this bubble that's put around them, either by society, their parents, whatever. Obviously their parents love them, but you know, they treat them kind of like they're broken. And we get to pop that bubble and treat them like a kid for a change. And it's, it's a responsibility that I feel in my, in my soul, in my heart, that I, I, I can't ever see myself walking away from because it's, it's made that much of an impact on my life. Um, and I've been able to be a part of six camps now, so that's 124 kids. Uh, there's an odd number in there just because it's supposed to be 20, but we did one year 24, a little too many kids. But uh, it was, it's always been such an amazing experience and, and seeing them grow. Uh, the impact that we have on communities really is to bring positivity and to bring the, um, you know, the relationship building that, that we want to have. We want to continue these relationships. Uh, for example, here in Lakeland, we've been coming for the past few years and I couldn't imagine us having our spring training anywhere else because this is a, a relationship that we've built with the Tigers organization with the fans who are here uh, and with the with the people who walk by and maybe see us for the first time and they say you know oh, I can't wait to come back next year and see you guys again so it really is a, a major part of what we're doing here us being on the forefront showing the sacrifices and resiliency of our men and women in the armed forces by playing a game of softball the crowds come out and support us everywhere we are. Someone in that crowd, you know, has a grandfather served in World War II or uh, a person that served in Vietnam. Um, someone out there broke their leg at one time, felt sorry for themselves, and now they're coming out here seeing these guys and gals play. There's no excuses now. They see it firsthand and they realize no matter how bad they have it, someone always has it worse. And by seeing us go and play against all the traumatic events we face in our lifetime, really it's like an awe-inspiring experience for them. I get a lesson every every couple of uh, events we go, there's something that catches me that, you know, I, if you ever felt bad about yourself, you can come look at this team and it should give you some uplifting uh, emotions to push through whatever you want because this team, it's a no-quit uh, attitude. You know, you got guys out here that aren't making excuses for themselves. It gives you this pure sense of the game that sometimes we take for granted. Uh, and if, if I could tell anybody or teach them anything, it'd be perspective because, again, I think we're coming out here and from the outside looking in, you, you got guys who are battered. You know, we got guys who have been mutilated in war, but they're coming in here, they're living their life, they're leading by example. I think that's one of the best things we do is lead by example, we just go out there and do it. For more information, you can look them up on the web at www.woundedwarrioramputeesoftballteam.org. That's going to do it for this edition of Today's Veteran. I want to thank our guest today, Dr. Kevin White, the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team, and of course, Hercules Lynch. But most of all, I want to thank you for joining us. Remember, for help and information regarding claims, benefits and services available to veterans and their families, call the Polk County Veterans Service Office at 863-534-5220 or log on to the Polk County website at polk-county.net. I'm your host, Tim Kirkhart, and we will see you next month.